Welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we are going to talk about Charge Cube, and I'm going to explain to you how it's built, how it works, and why this thing is going to change the world. Think of Charge Cube as a retirement place for electric vehicle batteries. Now, we're all starting to hear that Tesla batteries and other EV batteries last a lot longer than we think, and there's actually been some in these sold recently on over 200,000 miles, and they still had 88% of battery capacity. So that when you come across something like this, which is a categorized vehicle, wouldn't probably go back on the road, cost too much to fix, but the batteries are normally in absolutely perfect condition. So that's where Charge Cube comes in. Basically get a car like this, drop the battery pack out, and that then goes into a Charge Cube, and then all the other bits get recycled to fix other Teslas so they stay on the road. I'm gonna show you the battery pack that comes out of this. Now this is the battery pack from the underside when it's still in the car. The key thing here is when a vehicle comes in, if it's not on high mileage, is to maybe just check there's no ripples or damage under here and make sure that these cooling fittings just here are in one piece because these wheels in accidents get knocked back and they hit the coolant fittings in here and damage them. And if they get damaged, unfortunately, it can let fluid into the battery pack, which water and batteries don't mix too well. This is the Tesla Model 3 battery pack from the top side, which is the bit you didn't see when we were under the car. And one thing that is quite cool is it does this. If you've ever supercharged in a Tesla, you will hear that noise as it charges up, as it all expands. It's a little bit disserting when you first charge the car, but you get used to it after a while. Now under here, we have our charger and DC to DC and all the other fun stuff. So this is the charger DC to DC. So this does 11 kilowatt AC, or it does single phase, seven kilowatt, and it also has a DC to DC. Now DC to DC basically takes high voltage, 400 ish volts, converts it down to 12 to 16 volts to charge up the normal battery to do the auxiliary systems because the contactors in here also run on 12 volt. This connector here, that is for CCS rapid charging. So that's what takes the HV in from the CCS rapid charger into the battery pack to do that crazy fast charging speed they do. But they also have their own contactors, as you can see here, because you don't want those pins on the CCS port being live when the pit vehicle is live. You've also got a positive contactor here and a negative one here. That might be around the right way, because I am just guessing I haven't measured it yet. Um, and they are basically to stop any power coming out the battery pack when the vehicle is powered down. And just there is a whole load of nothing, because it normally has a pyro fuse. Now this is the key thing. This is a pyrotechnic fuse that blows in the case of an accident, which means the HV is not coming out of the battery pack. Now, why is this important? Because on all those crash damaged cars that we get for charge cube, this potentially could be blown. If the airbags aren't blown on the car, the chance size isn't blown. But if you're gonna rebuild a Model 3 pack and use it, make sure you buy a proper Tesla one from them. Do not buy a cheap one, because we have seen some videos of these that are cheap ones, and they just explode inside the battery pack. And I mean, explode and cover the whole battery pack in strapnel. So getting a proper one is really, really important. Now, let's go and have a closer look at the inside of the charge cube. Now you've seen the battery pack, which comes out of things like this, accident damage tests or high mileage ones, and they then go into the cube itself. Now this is a 10 foot C container. It's been cut down from a 20 foot, and then all the stuff's been put inside. So you basically have a pair of Tesla Model 3 batteries. Now this can go up to six high, so it can be right up here, which means it's 450 kilowatt hours of battery, or it can be BYD or VW, all of those. But the key thing in here, you can probably may hear the noise a little bit on my mic. There's a set of fans here with radiators and a pair of water pumps and a PDU. So basically what it can do, it can monitor the battery pack temperature and then kick the water pumps and fans on based on battery pack temperature, inverter temperature, or just the general temperature of the container. These things can get pretty damn warm in the summer. Oh, and this weird stuff here, it's a bit like grip tape, stops condensation in the container, which means you don't get too wet. Now obviously these have had the pyro fuses replaced as I showed you. And then what Charge Cube's done is they basically plug in here to the original HV connectors on the battery pack, which would normally go to the motor and they go into a box like this. So why is there a box like this? Well, basically Tesla use aluminium cable, which is not actually that common. So basically we go into a connector here with the aluminium to then go into the copper to go into the inverter just to stop there being corrosion long-term and make it super reliable from that point of view. And then how do I know so much about this? Why am I allowed to tell you all this? So I have to come honest with you. I'm also the CEO of Felton, which make Charge Cube. So I'm a little bit probably biased towards the Charge Cube because it's my baby, 
but I thought it'd be really good to share it with all you guys on the Hazelnuts channel. And then we have basically an inverter. Now, I've been told, or I know, that basically this is gonna to change to the rack mount units you get on CCS chargers and stuff like that, because then they can be modular and chopped in now. But for now, this works really well. This is basically a solar inverter, three phase one at 50 kilowatts. Um, so it has a grid supply in, then has a grid out, which is buffered by the batteries. So it can take the power from the grid and add the batteries to it to output 63 amps, three phase. Or if you lose the grid completely, it just keeps going at 63 amps, three phase, as long as there's power in the batteries. But you can set this up to do some cool things like, is it really cheap to buy electric at, I don't know, 12 to 4 a.m. in the morning? Maybe, maybe they'll pay you to take it. So you can pump it into these, store it, and then use it in the daytime. Or you can fill these up in the day when you've got available power and charge a massive fleet of vehicles at night. Oh yeah, also, this is the clever bit. Shouldn't forget that. These are the VCUs developed by the team at Felton. And on there is some very, very, very clever software, which basically makes the battery packs think they're still in a Tesla. But it also knows that all the fault codes, all the safety systems, so it can read everything from that battery pack and make informed decisions about how much power to pull. How hot is it? How cold is it? Should we limit them? How, what's the state of charge? What's the state of health? And then all that data can basically go through a router here, through a thingy-mabobby here, which has a SIM card in there, to the cloud, where the team can monitor it all the time and track this thing to make sure it's healthy and working correctly. Oh, and there's this thing called OCPP, which the chargers use. It's some sort of communication program, but basically it means you can monitor every single charger on the system and know exactly how much power it's pulling, who's logged into it, who's using it at any one time, and how much power it's pulling from the overall system. On the side of the charge cube, you have, surprise, surprise, a charger, because it is a charge cube. Now this is an Hotel 7 kilowatt unit, but I think they've got 22 kilowatts on these. And also you've got a nice little screen and some RFID things. And then how do you plug into the charge cube? Well, you pop up this little cover, and yes, before you say, it, this is a bonnet unit <laughs> you use on race cars, mainly because they're super slick, they don't get smashed off and there's a lock on them. Um, because race car, yeah? Um, now you have, hey, you have high voltage in here, which is three phase, uh, AC, 380 volts or 220, depending on where you are. And then you have basically uh, single phase outputs here and here. Now this will have loads of them, depending on how many chargers they're being supplied. This is basically does six type two chargers in total, which is two either side and then one on either side of the actual unit. Um, and these cables go to pavilions. Now, pavilion is, it's a name that we've come up with just because it sounds cool. Um, but this is the pavilion. So as you can see, it's, it's a big old lump. Uh, it looks like a container, which is really cool. So it's all ripply. Charge cube logo, little LED so you don't reverse into it, but I'm pretty sure loads of people are gonna reverse into this thing. And then you basically got a charger on either side. So you've got a seven kilowatt charger on either side. So the plan is you reverse your car up and you plug it in and you charge. And then you drive off again. It's that simple. Now there is the other charger on this side, like I said, just want to make sure you can see it actually exists. And there is more outputs on this side as well. Now the key thing about this one, when it's up at 450 kilowatt, it can do CCS rapid charging. So that's 240 kilowatt CCS rapid charging with a 450 kilowatt hour battery, which is crazy fast. Or you can have type two chargers and you can have up to 12 type two chargers on these little ones. And on the big 20 foot ones, you can have up to 36. Yes, 36 type two chargers, which is absolutely insane. Now, thanks for watching this episode. I know it's been a bit different. We haven't been taking a car apart, but that's because we've been having our brand new ramps fit to the Hazelnuts unit from GEO, which is Garage Equipment Online, which sponsored us. And so on the next episode, we can actually get stuck in and start stripping that van to pieces, getting that Tesla apart to build that insane electric race van. So if you haven't done already, hit subscribe and I'll see you again soon.